Okay, so everything you need to know about gastric polyps. Incredibly common finding, 6% of gastroscopies, uh, and that's likely an underreport. Most common polyp in the Western world is a fundic gland polyp, likely associated with the high use of PPIs. In places where there's a higher incidence of helicobacter, you're more likely to find hyperplastic adenomas as polyps. They're the poor relation to their clonic friends, likely because they're not carrying as much malignant potential and therefore they're not taught about as much. And often that leads to people being quite unsure about what to do with them. Before we get onto the polyp specifics, the thing you need to know about when you find polyps are firstly, what is the helicobacter status? If the patient is helicobacter positive, it needs to be eradicated. That's particularly important when we come on later to talk about resection, because what we find is if you eradicate helicobacter, the size of the polyp can regress. So actually you might not need to resect a polyp if actually once you eradicate the helicobacter, it goes away. The other thing you know, need to know about is what is the background mucosa? Is there chronic atrophic gastritis? And of course, if there is, you're more likely to find adenomatous polyps, but also that will change your management. Okay, so moving on to the types of polyps. Actually, it's quite simple. There are three main types. First type of the adenomatous polyps. These are the sort of velvety pink polyps. They have the tubular villus pattern. Under an image enhancement, you can often see brown vessels and there might even be some little white exudates there, which are the lipid droplets. We know that uh, that they are more likely to occur in the context of chronic atrophic gastritis. And in that context, you know that there is a reported rate of about 30% chance of there being a synchronous cancer. In big adenomatous polyps, that's greater than two centimetres, um, there's 50% of them are likely to be uh, carrying a cancer inside them. The next type of polyp is a hyperplastic polyp. These are often smooth, red, butter type polyps. Um, they can often have a little white exudate on them as well. Um, they're often dome shaped. These polyps, the incidence of dysplasia increases with size, but actually, as we know, uh, they very rarely carry much um, dysplasia or malignant potential. The final type of polyp is a fundic gland polyp. These are pale, smooth, glassy appearance, often actually lighter than the background mucosa, or at least the same colour as the background mucosa. If you see something that's lighter than mucosa, it's likely to be an FGP. They have lacy vessels on them and they have um, uh, little dots on them as well, which are very easy to identify. Malignant potential goes up with size, so when they're greater than one centimetre, some studies say that that's up to a 2% risk of it carrying some sort of dysplasia inside. What are the polyps that we need to worry about when we're looking at them? Generally speaking, if there's a regular mucosal pattern or disorganised mucosal pattern or vascular pattern, or if there's an absent amorphous appearance, that might be harbouring dysplasia. When do we biopsy polyps? Well, at the moment, unfortunately, visual diagnosis is not good enough. So um, at the moment, we have to biopsy them, okay? Now, obviously, if there's 20 or 30 in the stomach, what you need to do is have a good look, make sure you're happy with the, the visual diagnosis of them, and then take a sample of the representation of some polyps. So if there's 20 in the stomach, you know, sample four or five to prove your diagnosis is right. Um, I think probably the, the visual diagnosis we're certainly getting better at, and the more we teach it, the better it is, but... Um, it's likely, I think, in the future, we'll move away from biopsy polyps provided our visual diagnosis is right. But certainly we know that the bigger the polyp, the more likely there is dysplasia hiding in between. So when do we resect polyps? Well, simply, if they're bigger than one centimetre, they need to be resected. Um, if they're adenomatous, they always need to be resected, regardless of their size. And finally, if the patient has a history of anemia or bleeding, and the patient has stigma, uh, sorry, and the polyp has a stigmata of bleed, i.e. ulcer or vessels, it needs to be resected. That is everything you need to know about gastric polyps, and I hope that was useful.